Good afternoon, Mary News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update. And in the news this afternoon, past the president drags a teachers' union to court. The union representing teachers in Jamaica is now entangled in a lawsuit filed by a former president which aims to nullify its current three-year wage agreement with the government according to court documents. Lassandra Harrison, immediate past the president of the Jamaica Teachers Association, contends in the lawsuit that the virtual special delegates vote held in March last year to accept the wage offer presented by the Ministry of Finance under the Public Service was in breach of the GTA's constitution. Section 14 of the GTA constitution explicitly states that voting must be carried out by the Assembly of Delegates at a physical location and not virtually, she asserted in an affidavit obtained by the news. According to the lawsuit, Section 14 is similar to Section 13, which deals with the holding of the union's annual conference. In both instances, the delegates can only vote with their physical presence by a show of hand or where secret ballots are permitted. The claimant therefore contends that the acceptance of the present salary package given to members of the GTA is a void on the basis that the GTA was not properly constituted in carrying out the vote to accept the government's offer, Harrison argued. The virtual conference where delegates voted to accept the government's wage offer was chaired by Harrison in her capacity as a GTA president at the time, according to members of the executive. She acknowledged in the lawsuit that it was her proposal for the conference to be conveyed online, but said this was based on advice from the Secretariat. Harrison noted that, too, that online meetings and conferences was the practice throughout because of the COVID-19 pandemic. At the onset of the pandemic in March 2020, the government enacted rules under the Disaster Risk Management Act that, among other things, placed the limits and included nightly curfews. These were withdrawn in March 2022, a year before the now contentious virtual special delegates vote was taken. The lawsuit, which was filed in the Supreme Court last Wednesday by the law firm Hugh Wildman and Company, seeks five declarations, including an order that voting that took place during the special delegates conference on March 12, 2023, was unlawful because it was not in keeping with the constitution of the JTA. Further, Harrison wants the court to declare the result of the poll null and void and of no legal effect, claiming that the delegates did not vote in keeping with Section 14 of the constitution of the JTA. Approximately 80% of the delegates who were present voted to accept the three-year agreement, which became effective April 1, 2022. It includes a guaranteed 20% minimum increase in basic salary after tax deductions. Harrison raised the eyebrows at the time when she walked out of the contract signing ceremony at the Finance Ministry's downtown Kingston office, leaving other members of the JTA executive to sign. The lawsuit also seeks a declaration that the constitution of the JTA does not provide for a special meeting to be conducted by online voting and a declaration that, under the JTA constitution, a special conference must be convened with the physical presence of all delegates participating in the vote and not by virtual voting. Incumbent JTA President Leighton Johnson confirmed that he is aware of the lawsuit but declined to comment. There is a case pending, so I will not make any comment at this time, he told the news when contacted on Friday. A legal victory for Harrison could present a dilemma for over 30,000 teachers, including the former JTA president, who have already received billions of dollars in salary and a retroactive payment under the new wage pact, one veteran educator opined. The three-year agreement is scheduled to end next March. Over 30,000 teachers have been impacted by this negotiation. If she gets all the declarations being sought, what would be the remedy? How would this issue be resolved? The educator questioned. However, according to one senior attorney, the salaries and the retroactive payments made to teachers under the three-year pact would not be impacted if the court decides with Harrison. 
It would certainly affect the decision and everything would be nullified, but I don't think the salary increase would be affected because the governmental processes for giving the salary increase was perfectly in accordance with the law and valid, said the attorney, who did not want to be named. What would have been invalid is the approval and the vote of the GTA. Harrison disclosed in her affidavit that in the days after the special delegates' conference, she sought and obtained a legal opinion regarding the legality of the vote to accept the wage offer made by the finance ministry. According to the former GTA president, the legal advice indicated that the vote was not in keeping with the JTA's constitution. Harrison said she alerted JTA Secretary General Dr. Mark Nicely of the irregularity and followed up with an email dated March 31 last year. She said Nicely responded via email the same day, but details of his response were not included in the affidavit. Stern Town Man Charged After Altercation with Security Forces Stern Town resident Devon Fallen has been charged with assault in relation to an incident in which he accused the St. Anne police and the soldiers of abuse. Senior Superintendent Dwight Powell, commanding officer for the St. Anne Police Division, says that Mr. Fallen was charged with assaulting police and resisting arrest. He is scheduled to appear in the Petty Sessions Court on September 3. The Independent Commission of Investigations is probing allegations that Mr. Fallen was beaten by members of the security forces during a pre-dawn operation in Gulf Steertown last week Saturday morning. Mr. Fallen, a 30-year-old fisherman from the community, said he was not a wanted man and that the only weapon in his possession was a fishing gun. SSB Powell told the news that Mr. Fallen was injured during the attempts to subdue him. This operation was in search of a man that was said to be in possession of a prohibited weapon. During the targeted operation, the subject, Devon Fallen, O.C. Bagger, 30 years old, fisherman of Gulf, Steertown, St. Uh, reportedly physically uh, assaulted the team. He was subdued. Uh, he received injuries in the process. He was subsequently arrested, charged, released, and banned. And the said team assisted him to the St. Anne's Bay Public Hospital. Separate crashes in St. Anne claimed two lives. A motorist was arrested after he could not produce a driver's license following a fatal crash on the Laughlands main road in St. Anne on Friday evening. The victim is unidentified. He is of dark complexion, slim built, and about 37 years old. He was clad in a red shirt and yellow shorts. It is reported that about 8 p.m., the pedestrian was hit by a motor car in the vicinity of the Paradisiac Beach Club after the driver lost the control of the vehicle. The man was pronounced dead at the St. Anne's Bay Hospital. The police say the driver, who is not the holder of a license, was taken into custody. Fourteen hours earlier, a man died after a vehicle he was driving crashed into a rock at the intersection of the Walker's Wood and Orange Park main road in St. Anne. The deceased is 28-year-old Stefano Lodge of Moniga Gardens in the parish. Mr. Lodge reportedly lost the control of the vehicle while driving along the Walker's Wood main road towards Monique. Guys, thank you for watching. See you this evening at 6 p.m. for another news update.